Hello everyone and welcome to my hobby home. My name is Kathy. Thank you so much for joining me today. We are working on another test block. Um, I have my few fabrics cut here, so this may go pretty quick. The pattern that I am working with is Silverstone. This is a Robert Kaufman pattern. It is 10 square friendly. So um, I am thinking this may be too big of pieces to use for a, a stash sew along, but I wanted to try it because I think the largest sizes of pieces is four and a half inch square. So that kind of has me wondering if this is going to be a good uh, contender for that. So what we are going to do, I'm telling you the pieces that I have here. I've cut four, four and a half inch squares. I've cut four, two and a half inch squares. I have two, two by eight and a half inch strips and the pattern doesn't call for this but since i am only doing a block i needed to i think these are 12 and a half inch strips because i want to make a solid block and but what it calls for is actually for a strip that goes all the way across the top and then strips that go all the way down the sides but we're only doing a block of this so let's just get started with it um our pattern don't, now i will let you know how i cut my stuff because i like to tell people what i use i use these trim locks this is a four and a half inch square trim lock and this is a two and a half inch square trim lock i know they're hard to see because they are clear fluorescent yellow but those are what I use to cut my squares now on the squares what we are to do I'm just going to start by pulling one out we are to take one of our two and a half inch we are to put a diagonal from corner to corner or so diagonally corner to corner I'd put mine on there I use my little uh, friction pen and my marker tool my little this is actually the one i use see if you can see that there that marker tool i do have a link down in the description for that i'm just going to get on and start sewing while i'm talking to you um i use that trim tool to mark my diagonal and to cut or do my trim i think it's called a marking tool it's by OmniGrid. I absolutely love it. The pack that I got is a three pack. It comes with a, a longer one and a shorter one. I believe it's a shorter one. Yes, it comes with a very short one and a longer one. So now I need to d decide. I'm going to do my stripe this way. And we will put that corner, I believe, on all four little squares that we cut but i'm i am afraid that this is not going to be a good um scrap buster or it could be a stash buster if you have lots of charm packs that you would like to use up you have multiple charm packs now it says it is 10 inch square friendly so if you have some layer cakes um let me see how many it calls for it says from each square in the 10 square pack cut two four and a half by width of fabric strips subcut two four and a half inch squares from each strip so you're just cutting it in half and then cutting it in half and then you have a fabric a you cut 11 two and a half by width the fabric strips 
and you subcut that into 168 two and a half inch squares. Let me see if it tails. So we got 110 square pack and then fabric A is going to be two and a eight yards and the binding is going to be half a yard. So, but all we're doing is one square right now. We're just trying to see if this is the route we want to take. Now, I'm not going to lie. This is a beautiful square. Uh, I did find this. Somehow I came across it. It's a Robert Kaufman fabrics pattern. And I found several um, Robert Kaufman patterns that are free. All you have to do is go to the web. I will put the link down in the description. Um, I guess when I decide which one I'm going to use. But uh, this one is, again, let me see, what is it called? I have two that I've got printed out that I'm going to try. This one is called Silverstone. And it does look like it would lend well to having... Um, like two solids maybe and you know your ten your ten square. And I say two solid well no, you'd only have to have one solid. So this would work great for for me, but I mean for y'all. So this may be more of a smash the stash instead of a scrappy. Find my little I use my little uh, cutter here there is a link I'll save for that down in the description this is a Dritz cutting caddy I think is what it's called I'm not sure it's a little caddy though so what I am going to do now I am going to trim uh, these squares that I've cut and press them out and I will be right back so now I have my four squares with the little triangle on the bottom now i will tell you it says you okay we are going to have a total of 168 of these squares because it tells me to repeat to make 168 units so we'll have 168 of these and you will use four in one square so the next thing we do is select the four units, arrange units in two rows of two. So say like we want, and we have to um, put them together like this. So I am going to just lay those aside and we're going to start with these two. We're just going to even them up, make sure I'm going to sew it from the side where that seam is going down. And uh, once again, I, I don't believe I said it, but everything is at a quarter of an inch. then we will do the other square also and this is probably going to be a real quick test of this square because it is very simple I mean very very simple just make sure everything is lining up and I hope y'all are having a wonderful wonderful weekend it is so beautiful here I've been able to work in my garden again um, however, we are supposed to start, it is Sunday afternoon, and I hope you're having a great Father's Day to all the fathers out there, and all the non-fathers that stepped up to be good male role models for children. I have special ones um, that I had in my life that are no longer here with us, my uncle, my uncle Wayne he was a great father figure for us and then my dad which is still here happy father's day um, 
my husband. He is a, I call him a bonus dad because he stepped up when my children were very young. He married a woman that had three kids, so he stepped up for a lot. Let me press these, and then I will sew these together. And then there is my son. This is his first Father's Day. And I'm going to call him my son-in-law because he and my daughter have been mar not married, but they've been together since she was in fourth grade, and, and they... In their eyes, they are married. And this is his first Father's Day. I went and saw them a moment this morning because I was talking to my daughter. And she asked me if I was coming over because her baby was trying to climb through the phone to his Grammy. He wanted to see his Grammy. So, of course, you know, whatever they want, they get. If he wanted to see me, he was going to see me. I'd love to see my little grandbaby girl, but she's... I've got a lot going on this weekend. I always have a lot going on. And they an hour and a half away, so... But I got to... I got to call my son and wish him a happy Father's Day today because it's his first year. It's his and my my daughter's. This is their first year. Well, y'all, that turned out really cute, although I should have alternated, but I didn't. So I got two light colors and two dark colors, but that's still a cute block. Let me press that. Okay, so that is that now what we will do is add a strip on each side i didn't even cut the selvage off of it because i thought you know this is a test block it really is not going to matter and it's kind of like a scrappy block supposed to be a scrappy block and i have a lot of selvage stuff in my scraps so selvage is fine with me it's fabric it's just fabric with holes or words on it. But we'll put these, uh, I think it's a two inch by eight and a half inch strip. We'll put those on the sides. take that other one and put on the side as well and now this one is coming together really quickly I may even do a test with the fabrics that I'm wanting to use for the quilt you know my maybe it's more a smash the stash <laughs> maybe I'll just use what I'm going to use to do it just to do a test with those colors because I will not be using white as my solid. I'm going to press real quick and be right back. Now in the photo of this on the uh, thing that I printed out, it shows using the same solid for these squares and these strips, which I did not have enough fabric, which, you know, kind of can make it scrappy. I did not have enough fabric to do that um, for all the way around the block, which is fine. Now, this strip is going to be a little bit longer because I think I cut it at 12 and a half inches and I did not need 12 and a half inches, but I just added four inches to the eight and a half. So I wanted to make sure I had enough and I do. But, you know, I'm thinking on, um, I, I think this will be a pattern that I do make. It just may not be the one I make for the smash the stash because it, 
it is 10 square friendly. So if you have a layer cake that you just don't know what to do with, buy you a coordinating solid or light color print to do with this to make for your center squares and your borders, that would be fabulous. I bet that would be gorgeous. And I have a lot of layer cakes. I actually have a flannel one that I may, I may make this with for my grandbabies because um, it is a, um, what do you call it? It does have designs for a nursery or a baby. So I could easily do that to have a little warm quilt for the babies here. You know, a snuggly quilt. I don't really sew with Minky just because I don't really like fighting with the fabric. I've only made one. I'm going to call it a blanket because it does not have batting in it. Um... I've only made one thing with Minky, and that was for my grandson. I had made it years ago. I mean years. I just had not finished it because the Minky, I didn't realize how bad it stretched would stretch out, and I'd never used it before, and I was just trying it out to see. And... um yeah, it, it just didn't do real well for me. Okay, I'm going to press and trim, and we're going to see what this block looks like. Well, friends, this turned out wonderful. This is definitely a pattern that I will be making um, a quilt out of. Now, as I said, the strip that goes across the top and the bottom was not a strip in here because let me see if i can show it to you okay you are going to have a white strip that goes across the top and in between each block it's going to be just one long strip i cut these just for demonstration purposes to um show what that block would look like i can see taking your scraps and making those two and a half inch squares um because I know I've got a little box over in my sewing cabinet that's got nothing but two and a half inch squares. But if you have solids to do that two and a half inch square with, that would be great. And let me tell you how many two and a half inch squares. I will link this down in the description along with the tools that I use. And I may include a few more tools. If you're interested, just click that link and go look at them. Um, and also the backing for this quilt is three and three fourths yards. So um, let me look to see what the total size of this quilt is. It's a 58 and a half by 68 inch. So it's a throw quilt. And it tells you here that when you cut, you're going to cut, um, well, for the four, two, four and a half, you'll do four and a half. So that's your layer cake. And then your squares, you'll do 168 two and a half inch squares. So this though looks like it would be, cause this is the assembly it looks like it would be very easy to enlarge it if you wanted to and just not cut your sashings that go between the rows um and when i say that the sashing that goes this way and then the sashing that goes or your borders that go down the sides but y'all this is a very easy pattern so now we have two blocks that we have tried i am going to show you the first one now i have two different of the first one that we tried and there must be a general theme of this because i'm having the blue in the middle but i really like this one too that one is so pretty this is the one um I had the this blue solid that ended up in the 
the strips and I wasn't real crazy about that one at all and I think everyone that mentioned something about it said it might look better without that blue in here well that's the blue the one without the blue in it so and I think um, to do this maybe you scraps if we end up doing this you scraps that have all the same foundation color like all whites or all blues because you can tell right here that has the blue and it just does kind of stand out so maybe use ones with kind of all the same foundation color in it but when it comes to a big quilt i don't know that may make not make a big difference at all so guys thank you so much for joining me i know this is just a quick snippet it is another tester block that is the silver stone it is and the fabric they use on the uh, pattern is botanical gardens but this is and the difficulty rating is beginner it's 10 square friendly very easy to make that was so easy y'all that that was very easy that was almost too easy but you could make it make the detail in the quilting if you wanted to to give throw it some complexities to it now i still have not yet created my facebook group for this and i don't know that my facebook group is just going to be for the sew along it may be my facebook group that i put things out in periodically um, that i'm working on that i'm making that i'm thinking about so gosh i'll stay tuned um, i would love it if you've not yet subscribed please do feel free to leave a comment i do try to respond to each and every comment personally and as always have a very blessed day and happy father's day to all the men out there thank you guys goodbye